Welcome back to How to Cake It. I'm Yolanda, and this is Dasher. This week I made Christmas ornaments because it's almost Christmas. I can't even believe that. If you've been following along with How to Cake It, hopefully you've seen my other fun Christmas videos. I made a gingerbread house cake. I made Christmas cake cookie sandwiches, which I call cakeies naturally and I hope you've downloaded my holiday baking hacks ebook there's a special link in the book that leads you to a secret how to cake it video you can check it out in the link below this is gonna be our final holiday video and I want to go out with a bang bang <laughs> oh my god that's scary I hope people don't watch this with earphones that's all they watch it with oh sorry I'm sorry for those of you Oh, Miss Jocelyn, would you like to answer your iMessage? <laughs> it was an email. Oh, she's pretending she's working. <laughs> I wanted to make three different Christmas ornament cakes. I have two already iced and chilling in my fridge, but I want to walk you through how I got them to that stage with my third ornament cake. I started by making a three inch portion of my favorite vanilla cake, but before I pour that batter into a five inch round sphere pan, I'm gonna fold in some crushed candy cane. Yes, I did, I know. I, it's really good. I remove them from both halves of the sphere pan and simple syrup them. If you don't know what simple syrup is, you clearly haven't been watching how to cake it. Welcome! Simple syrup keeps your cakes nice and moist, especially the type of cakes that take a while to decorate, so when your guests eat it, they'll think it came right out of the oven dasher. It's time for buttercream, but instead of my usual Italian meringue buttercream, I am making a whole egg buttercream. On top of that, I wanted my buttercream to have an eggnog flavor, so I flavored it with some brandy and some freshly grated nutmeg. I spread some of my eggnog buttercream on top of the bottom half of my sphere, and then I sandwiched the two spheres together, and then I crumb coated the entire ball and put it in the fridge to chill. Once it's chilled, I need to ice my cake one more time as smoothly as possible and then let it chill again. When my buttercream is nice and firm, I wet my hands and use my fingertips to work out any lines and ridges that I can see. Don't think that fondant covers all your mistakes, it doesn't. So if I leave ridges in this cake, my fondant will only highlight those ridges. Now I have three ornament cakes ready to be covered in fondant. My other two cakes are four inch round sphere and a six inch round sphere. And the six inch round is actually chocolate candy cane. Yes, I did that too. I'm gonna begin by covering my largest ornament cake and I've made a really pretty raspberry red fondant. I love the color. I drape my raspberry red fondant over my ornament and I smooth it using my hands because a fondant smoother is flat so that really won't help you. I work my fondant from the top down, working out all the air, pushing it out from underneath. And when I get down to the bottom, I actually flip my cake board over and hold the ball cake in my hand. And then I start to press the fondant up over the bottom edge. You like this? Yes, like that, Dasher, like this. You are gonna start to see a handprint if you hold it for too long, so you wanna work quickly. But I find holding it in my hand and cutting off the excess that way is just a lot more efficient. Now I'm gonna pop this raspberry red ornament into the fridge and move on to my two other cakes. I'm gonna give them the same spa treatment I just gave the first one. For the smallest ornament cake, I'm using a lovely kind of tealy green that I achieved using some green and some blue and a little bit of purple food coloring. And for the middle ornament cake, I'm just using white fondant. Dasher, are you ready to decorate? He is. Very subtle, Yolanda. I know. <laughs> For the teal ornament cake, I'm making a snowflake pattern. When else am I gonna use my snowflake cutter? And I just cut snowflakes out of white gum paste, and then I added a little bit of iridescence to them with some pearl luster dust. To determine what would be the middle of my ornament, I have to visualize where I'll put the topper. What is that thing called? Let me use one of these lesser ornaments to demonstrate. Oh, Tasher, don't leave. Well, this one doesn't have a nice topper. Look at that, that's just some wire. Like, I'm sorry, it's not your fault. Now I'm gonna cut out my smaller snowflakes 
also give them a little bit of a luster and then place them above and below the first band of medium snowflakes that I placed. I'll put this ornament in the fridge for now. We're gonna add the topper later and I'm moving on to my white ornament cake. The white is actually just a base for this cake because I'm giving it a really, really funky treatment. Oh yeah, it's a funky, funky Christmas. You know that's a new Kids on the Block song, right? It is? Oh my God, I'm leaving. <laughs> I am gonna cover this ornament, are you even ready for this? With some sugar diamonds and some silver dragees in all different sizes. I attempted to crush my sugar diamonds with a rolling pin and my rolling pin didn't win the fight. Diamonds don't crush. So I got out my food processor with a blade and then I crushed my sugar diamonds. I now mix my gorgeous silver dragees into my crushed sugar diamonds and I just give them a toss like a drage salad. That's a salad that's not good for your teeth. To apply this mixture to my white ornament, I'm actually going to ice the ornament lightly in some white royal icing and then just press all that goodness. I mean, it's like, it's so sparkly in the bowl already. It's gonna look amazing on the ornament. Then I place that ornament in the fridge and move on to my final ornament, which is the gorgeous raspberry red. What I'm gonna do is mix some gold luster dust with a little bit of clear alcohol. Do not use rubbing alcohol. You cannot eat that. I use clear white rum, that's my preference. You can use lemon extract if you're worried about alcohol. However, the first ingredient in lemon extract is alcohol. Yes, I'm serious, Dasha. I take my beautiful golden rum and splatter my cake. I'm going Jackson Pollock on you. I got both the like the spray and then I let my brush hit the cake and make random brush brush, brush brooks. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Jackson Pollock was known for his brush brooks. I wanna walk through an art gallery dead <laughs> serious and be like, I know, look at the brush. I'm gonna pop my gorgeous Jackson Pollock masterpiece with its lovely brush strokes into the fridge and move on to making the toppers for all three ornament cakes. I begin by making the topper for my smallest ornament cake, which will be made out of white fondant. And what I'm gonna do is roll out my fondant to be quite thick. I'm using a circle cutter that is one and one eighth inch diameter. I use that cutter to cut out a really thick circle. I repeat the process of making the toppers for my other two ornament cakes. First I start with my gray fondant and I use a one and a half inch diameter cutter to cut that circle. And then with my yellow fondant I use a one and three quarter inch diameter round cutter to cut the thick yellow circle. Don't remove the fondant that is inside the cutter, just set them all aside to set up. The next step is to take some extra fondant, again, starting with the small ornament, the white one. Roll out a thin, long piece of white fondant, and then I'm gonna use some really pretty strip cutters, fancy strip cutters, to make decorative ornament toppers. Now that my fancy strip is ready, I can remove my white fondant from the circle cutter. Now you need to roll out a touch more fondant and cut a thin circle that is the same diameter place that thin circle on top of the thick circle so that we have just a nice smooth surface on top and then brush a little bit of water to the back of your fancy strip and wrap that strip around the entire circle. I'm gonna repeat the same process from my gray topper and my yellow topper using two different fancy cutters. If you want more information on exactly how, there's a link in the description below that will take you to howtocakeit.com. And while you're there, sign up for my mailing list because you will get access to these videos the night before everyone else does. Are you signed up, Dasher? You're not answering. Mm -hmm. I bet you Rudolph signed up. He's first in line for everything. To paint the white ornament topper, I'm going to brush on a thin layer of vegetable shortening and then brush on a nice layer of pearl luster dust. To paint the silver topper, I'm going to mix some silver highlighter with clear alcohol, now you know what I use, and paint the entire thing. I do the same thing for the yellow topper, but with gold highlighter. Rudolph has nothing on you. He just has a cold, so his nose is red. 
I'm going to make some gum paste rings for the top of my ornament toppers because these are the rings that you would use to hang your ornaments from a tree. I make these the day before. You can make them a few days before. You want them to be nice and dry. Now that my rings are dry, they need a light coating of pearl luster dust. Once again, I brush on a little bit of shortening and then pearlize. Pearlize it. I'm going to add these toppers to each one of my ornaments. Put on a little bit of royal icing underneath the topper of each one and glue it into place. Then I take a sculpting tool that's pointy on the end and poke a hole in the middle of the top of each topper so I can press my ring down into that hole. I'm obviously gonna hang these very heavy cake ornaments from a life-size extremely heavy cake tree. That's totally gonna happen. Time to cut into these ornament cakes and have a bite. I almost forgot that there's candy cane folded into the batter and eggnog buttercream. Brandy. Dasher, are you old enough to have brandy? If I'm old enough to be your mother, you can leave the brandy out. <laughs> what the hell? This has been my first How to Cake It Christmas. In fact, this has been my first year of How to Cake It. It's been such a crazy ride, almost a million subscribers. I can't believe that myself. It's the best Christmas gift ever. Thank you so much for joining me every week. I hope you've enjoyed the ride. I hope you'll tag along for some more into the new year. But guys, next week there's not gonna be a new cake because I need some time off. But we have something so fun and so exciting for you and I hope you'll enjoy it. I will be back January 5th, 2016. That is like some back to the future stuff. 2016? <laughs> Are you okay? It was just 1994.